Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dimitrios Kostopoulos, uh, co-founder of uh, Hands-On Seminars and I would like to welcome you all in this uh, very exciting and uh, interesting uh, uh, event tonight. Uh, we will be discussing with uh, Dr. Isopoulos a very uh, interesting uh, uh, topic in the area of uh, strain and counter strain. Uh, but uh, uh, before we um, move into that, um, I would like, uh, and as more and more people are um, uh, accumulating and, and uh, signing on, I would like to take the opportunity to just uh, uh, introduce to you for um, a, a couple of uh, moments um, a very, very exciting new program that Hands-On Seminars has uh, started. And this is a PR and marketing program for the hands-on professional. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, one of the things that we realized is that, yes, we are hands-on professionals, but uh, very few of us know how to properly disseminate the information of either our manual therapy practices or manual therapy careers. For this reason, we decided to create a program that actually is um, uh, appropriate not only for those who are in private practice, not only for those who own manual physical therapy practices, but also for those who are working for manual therapy practices. Because this specific program, the PR and marketing program for the hands-on professional, uh, not only it teaches you skills uh, to advance and um, promote your uh, manual therapy practice, but also if you are a manual therapist, that you're working for a hospital, for a clinic, for a private practice, it provides you with those skills that are necessary to advance your career and promote your portfolio and your career and your image as a manual physical therapist to the point that you are becoming an irreplaceable component for, for that physical therapy department, for that physical therapy, manual therapy practice. So uh, the, uh, um, I would like to also mention that the, this specific program is being uh, taught by um, the international speaker and business uh, consultant uh, uh, Paul Silovsky uh, with his uh, uh, associate uh, uh, Greg Ferreira and we are very proud to um, uh, introduce this uh, uh, course. Uh, it will take place, the first course uh, will take uh, place in New York City in January 26th and 27th. So those of you who are um, in New York or outside New York and you want to travel to New York, I strongly recommend this uh, program. And of course, you can always register at handsonseminars.com. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, before I go and, and, and introduce my uh, uh, good friend, associate, um, and uh, tonight's speaker, Dr. Isopoulos, I would like to take uh, uh, a quick poll from you so that we can get a sense as to which, where each of you is uh, uh, located. So if you take a quick second and you vote on uh, uh, what um, I just uh, uh, put on the screen, uh, indicating uh, your uh, location, where you are uh, located, and actually it seems that tonight um, the vast majority of people, not everybody has actually voted yet, but those who have uh, voted, they are all voting um, uh, from the United States. So it seems that tonight uh, uh, everybody is from the U.S., um, uh, which is great. And also, uh, please let us know what is your profession. We would like to know. Uh, your profession. Are you a PT uh, uh, or PTA? Are you an OTE and, or OTA? Uh, are you a medical doctor or a DO, uh, an athletic trainer or a licensed massage service or, or another type of uh, uh, professional? And it seems that uh, uh, tonight we have with us uh, 
uh, 80% of you are PTs or PTAs, and we have 20% uh, of you are uh, OTs or OTAs. Um, my third question, real quick, is if you have taken uh, a course in the past with uh, hands-on seminars, so we can get an idea of who is our audience tonight. So if you have never taken a course with us, or you have taken a course with us once, twice, three times, or if you are a CAMT or MCMT student or graduate, you can um, uh, indicate uh, that as well. Uh, and it seems that we have a, a split. 20% uh, of you have never taken a course with us, 20% uh, of you once, 40% three or more times, and we have 20% of you being um, MCMT or CAMT uh, students. And finally, so we can get a census as to uh, how frequently you like to have this type of uh, seminars offered through hands-on seminars, I would like to just ask you the question to uh, vote uh, on that. And uh, yes, one of you who did not vote before, uh, she says uh, that uh, uh, she is uh, reporting uh, from um, from Middle East, from Lebanon. We have somebody from Lebanon, uh, Lillian. Lillian, uh, hi. <laughs> All right, and with no with no further delay, uh, I would like to introduce you all to. Uh, my uh, good friend, uh, associate, uh, and uh, oops, not that guy, the other guy. Hold on, we'll fix Which that. Guy? <laughs> Which guy? Yes, that guy. This, uh, guy. this guy, okay. So okay. I'm going to introduce to all of you Dr. Konstantin Rizopoulos. He is uh, uh, also the co founder of uh, uh, Hands On Seminars. Um, uh, he and I have been. Um, uh, teaching for many, many years, and um, uh, yeah, many of you know of him um, through his publications, through his teachings, through his work. So, uh, with no further delay, I would like to introduce you, uh, Dr. Rizopoulos, who is going to start with his amazing topic on strain counter strain, and hopefully, we'll have a very nice conversation uh, tonight. So, um, uh, Constantine take over and uh, yes hello hello and hello uh, how are you guys uh, can you see my screen not yet you have to say yes and accept I the... don't see that um, yeah. Yeah, it should Oops. be somewhere yeah, it's hiding it. for somehow it's hiding. there you go I find it. there you go right. show my screen okay perfect now we can see so you can see my screen now Perfect. We can see your screen and half of your face too. Oh, hi. That's better. <laughs> now we can see the whole face. Now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Peace. <laughs> so, okay, now today's topic, as you know, is going to be strain, counter strain. Um, this is a very interesting topic, and we, uh, I, I have been working with that and teaching also this concept uh, for a few years now. and. I think it's one of the most amazing techniques that you can use, especially in cases that they are acute, uh, cases that they have acute pain, or even with chronic cases uh, like uh, fibromyalgia. Uh, people that they are very, very sensitive with uh, pain or, or any uh, any similar conditions that uh, due to uh, oversensitivity they cannot tolerate other techniques, I believe that strain counter strain can be an answer for you. So um, strain counter strain has been developed by uh, Dr. Jones and that was back in, uh, he's been working with it for years but in 90, 1981 he, um, uh, he went public in a way with this technique um, and basically uh, this technique, it's all about tender points uh, in myofascial in origin, of course. And the story goes that uh, back in, I think, in the 60s, he had a case, uh, a low back pain case, that um, he 
he was like the fourth choice uh, that the patient was seeking for a uh, cure. And uh, he was busy with his office, so he took the patient uh, and put the patient on the bed and tried to make him as comfortable as possible until he's done with another treatment. And when he came back after 20 minutes, uh, he realized that this patient had no pain. And it was a very interesting phenomenon, to him at least, back then, that how come, you know, without touching a patient, I'm able to cause this kind of change? So he started exploring the idea of uh, strain counter strain, and, and again, through the years he developed that theory, which is again very, very interesting in the way it's been um, uh, performed and, uh, and very interesting in terms of uh, results. So the, the dysfunction uh, of, of, uh, in the strain counter strain belief, it's totally related with, related with the muscle spindle. Uh, and in overall the proprioception uh, 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 abilities of a muscle. So, um, by looking at this slide, uh, as you see, uh, that's uh, a muscle, uh, and uh, in the muscle we have the uh, extrafusal cells, the muscle fiber cells, uh, and that's what, you know, we used for contraction. And if you dissect that and you go under uh, further examination, we're going to find the spindle. Now, the spindle has two parts. Uh, one of them is the um, nuclear chain fiber, that thin line here, and also the nuclear back fiber. Now, muscle spindle, as we know, monitors length, okay? Uh, it monitors length and also the change of that. Uh, in other words, it, it monitors velocity. And um, both of them are extremely important, so we know at all times where our body is and, and what, what our body does. So there is a, a very important connection between uh, muscle spindle and the activity of it and the CNS. So muscle spindle, you know, through a primary uh, uh, afferent uh, and secondary afferent uh, endings, it sends messages to spinal cord. So by looking here, this is the primary um, afferents, and or we call them the annulospiral endings. And right here you have um, the, the purple ones are the flower spray, spray endings. And again, both of them, uh, the light gray and the purple, they go to spinal cord and they give messages of stretching. So in other words, if this muscle gets stretched, for the CNS to know that, the primary afferent and the secondary afferent sends messages to, uh, to the spinal cord. So when that happens, the, uh, the muscle, to avoid any injury, because again, the, the action, the idea of a muscle spindle, it's to protect the muscle, right? So if the muscle sensor senses uh, an overstretch um, uh, activity, it sends messages and then in the spinal cord level there is a reflexive mechanism that says to the alpha motor neuron, which is uh, the neurons that innervates the extrafusal fibers, to contract. So that contraction, it is the, uh, the result of the messages that the muscle spindle sends to, um, to CNS. Now, at the same time with the alpha motor neurons, uh, the alpha motor neuron that contracts the extrafusal fibers, messages through the gamma motor neuron, which is in this slide the green one, as you see here, that's the axons of the gamma motor neurons, they send similar messages to the muscle spindle. And now this is a very important concept, and we call that concept the alpha gamma coactivation. In other words, when the extrafusal fibers contract, at the same time, the contractile uh, properties of the muscle spindle contract. So this part, it's always in tension. One of the things that, you, that CNS doesn't want is for the muscle fiber to be in slack. So the more the muscle relaxes, the more, uh, the more the muscle contracts, the more, in the wrong case scenario, the more this 
uh, uh, the muscle spindle will get in a slack uh, capacity. So to avoid that, gamma that innervates the contractile part of the muscle spindle creates a tension on it. So that part of the spindle is always aware of any change in length, and that's the important part. So looking at this small clip, okay, going into flexion and coming back, sometimes, as you have seen uh, through your uh, practice, um, people, they say, you know, I was bending over, doing something, and then trying to get off that position, I felt the pain in my back. So that's a very common scenario that we treat, uh, a muscle that it's been um, contracted, creating pain. So we're going to examine this kind of everyday life problem through the scope of um, strain counter strain. So there are two hypotheses. One of them is the proprioceptive hypothesis. And the proprioceptive hypothesis, again, has to do with the fact that while you are doing, let's say, in this case scenario, a forward bending, uh, let's say I'm in that position because I'm doing something down there on the floor. So I have to maintain that position for a period of time. So while I'm there, what it happens is the following. The extensors, because they're overstretched, they are firing very rapidly. The muscle spindle of the extensor, it's firing, giving messages to the brain that something is happening. So the CNS is totally aware of a specific action, which is overstretching of the antagonist. But everything is fine as far it's under control. So I can be still down there working. I can fix something in this position. I can stay for a few minutes like that and feeling no pain. So again, while I'm down there, in flexion, my extensor are overstretched, muscle spindles are firing rapidly. However, my flexors are firing very slowly. Why? Because there is no activity. Most of the activity is in the extensors of that action. So when I go down, the extensors are totally active to hold me there and avoid from falling down. And the flexors, they do nothing, so they're very relaxed. So muscle spindles, they are not, they're not doing much. So what else is happening? So the more I'm staying in that position, the muscle spindle of the extensors are firing because also of the myotatic stretch reflex, stretch reflex. So we engage the myotatic stretch reflex so there is more firing of the muscle spindle. Meanwhile, the flexors, due to, due to reciprocal inhibition, they are firing even less. So you're going again to a situation now that overactive extensors, slacking flexors, and this is where the problem might start. And this is the key here. The key that those flexors, for whatever reason, they're not as active as they are supposed to be on the spindle level, muscle spindle level. So what happens there? When the muscle is relaxed, the gamma efferent increases the sensitivity of the primary and secondary afferent for constant, for constant flow of information. In other words, because the CNS doesn't get much, doesn't get any information, and that's a level of uncertainty. And CNS doesn't like uncertainty. CNS wants specifics. They want data. So CNS, in order to get something from that from the flexors increases that's the, the, the sensitivity of the, of the gamma motor neuron. So those muscle spindles of the flexors, they are very sensitive, right? So when you're down there, okay, you're working, you've been there for a minute or so, some people, they stay in that position for longer than a minute because they have to, and what happens? Is the following. You try to get up and for whatever reason, pain comes in that part of your body. So you're there, something happens, and while you go up, you can't continue to extend yourself because of pain. And this is a very common problem 
that people experience, and I'm, I'm sure even you have experienced that a number of times. So, what happens there? Why, while I try to extend myself, I feel pain in my back? According to uh, strain counter strain, in, in, a, in an emergency situation, a situation that I have to change my position from uh, bending over to a straight, uh, to a neutral position and do something else, you expect what? You expect the, the extensors um, to, that they're, that they're stretched, you, you expect them to work, you know, contract the extensors so I can get from that position to, uh, to uh, an erect one. So those are the normal conditions you're not going to have any problems, okay, because again, you have the extensors that contract, the flexors that stretch, for stability, so when you come up, you are fine with no pain. However, under strain counter strain, um, under the hypothesis of uh, the proprioceptive hypothesis of the strain counter strain, those flexors are very silent. The muscles spill again, as I explained to you earlier, because they are they are not doing much. They are very silent. The gamma efferent, it's been very sensitive, and at the same time the spindle. So, when you try to extend, in other words, try to go to an erect position, those spindle, spindles, they register that initiation of extension as an overstretch. So, instead of playing along and helping into going to extension, they contract which is the very interesting property of a muscle spindle. So, again, due to that sensitivity being in that, in that location, being bending, you know, in, in, in flexion, for flexion, the hip flexors right now are so relaxed and so oversensitive in terms of sending information to CNS that the minute this body starts going up, they contract instead of letting those extensions finishing that motion into an erect position. And that's the strain. And now, as you see, I'm holding my back because I experience pain in my lower back, right? However, the problem is where? It's on the other side because the muscle spindle contracted here. So this is pretty much the uh, proprioceptive hypothesis of strain counter strain that the antagonist is responsible for pain on the agonist. Okay. Now in and we we, we we went through that and the nociceptive hypothesis uh, what comes to strain counter strain counter strain it's totally related into not only that your uh, your uh, your, your antagonist will experience problems on um, um, uh, on, uh, on proprioceptive uh, agonists or proprioceptive changes have problems with proprioceptive changes, but even the antagonist is going to have um, the an overstretched um, uh, problem. You can, in order to get an understanding of that of the nociceptive hypothesis, just imagine um, uh, a car accident. So in case of a whiplash injury, there you have both sides, agonist and agonist, suffering both, not only proprioceptively, but also through um, nociceptive responses uh, due to the speed of the accident, due to the velocity of the accident. So nociceptive, nociceptive cases, as you understand, it's much more involved and we have to go through all the layers of, um, of the tissue and correct many layers of tissue. So, in this kind of cases, yes, you can use strain counter strain, but you can use also other techniques. Um, now, from strain to counter strain, how do you go from that initial um, situation of, of, of um, injury to uh, a situation that there is relief? Uh, and the concept here is that uh, moving slowly and passively the muscle um, and therefore, it's spindle in a shortened position, uh, that's why we call it uh, position of ease, right? It creates an environment where the CNS decreases the gamma discharge 
causing a physiological normalization of the tissue. So by putting that tissue back into its relaxed, in a way, um, position, a position of, of, of uh, total ease, that helps to, in a way, recalibrate the muscle spindle. So that recalibration creates normalization. So pain goes away and tightness gets released. Um, how do we do that? Uh, by the way, there is also circulatory changes when we place that muscle in a position of ease. Blood circulates, there is more blood in the area, and as we know, the more uh, blood in an area, the better chances for, for, um, for healing in overall. Um, so how do we locate those points? Um, there, are three, there, there are many, actually, theories of how to locate uh, a point. Um, we have chosen here three of them, and, and through the years, again, a lot of theories have been developed over staying under strain. So, but the way we work, we pretty much, uh, we go by this protocol, and the idea, uh, the Jones um, way of locating those points are, is the following. For anterior surface points, flexion. So if you locate points on the anterior surface points, flexion will be the direction of ease. And for posterior surface points, extension will be the uh, position of ease. So if I have, for instance, uh, a point, a tender point on my iliopsoas, to release that point, I have to uh, put my iliopsoas in flexion, right? So the same applies for all muscles in a way. You want to shorten the muscle. And the further the points are from the midline, side bending or end rotation. And, and again, with, with strain under strain, you have to, in a way, fine tune your position in order to, um, to, get, um, the, 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 to get that position that causes pretty much no pain. You have no symptoms. Um, another way to go about it and find a point it's by, uh, from uh, Goodhart, and his idea is that points are located on the antagonist to the muscle active during painful or restricted movements. In other words, if I, have, if I move to my right, I do uh, right side bending, and I have pain in my right side bending, that, is, that means that my left scalenus has the problem. Okay, so that's another way to, um, to find a point. And for some other um, uh, therapists, uh, they, they say, okay, just palpate, and any point you find, you can always um, isolate that point by, and, 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 and uh, put it in a direction, or put it in a position of ease by shortening the muscle. So that's a simple way, but again, uh, as effective as anything else. Um, now, uh, the treatment. How do we do the, the, the trick? Uh, so Jones proposes the following. Uh, first of all, you've got to find that point. Uh, you've got to really palpate and, 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 and locate the tender point. Um, and um, you have a communication with the, with the patient, and you ask them whether they feel that tenderness of that tender point. And the minute you are palpating that point, you are asking and you are establishing, you, you know, you have, you have find that tenderness and you establish that point as number five, for instance. You say, okay, that's five, that's your pain right now. And that that's, has nothing to do with uh, pain uh, scale one to ten, but just it's an arbitrary number. And when you locate that point, you say, let's say this is five. Now, the minute you have identified the point and you have attribute the number five as max pain, then you start taking that muscle into position of ease. Okay, now while you move to that location, holding that tender point, you expect that number, the number five, to become less and less. So you ask the patient, what's the number now? Is it less than five? Yes, give me a number, three, okay? And then you continue more into another position of ease. Uh, further position of ease, and until you reach zero, or in severe cases, even one, that will be the position of holding, staying there for at least 90 
seconds. So you find the tender point, you identify the number five as max pain, and then you go slowly to a position of this, which means that number is going to go down to zero or one in the worst case scenario, and then you hold that position for 90 seconds. There are different researchers out there, they believe that 90 is too much, 10 is enough, others they say, no, it's not enough, you got to go up to 120 seconds, but we believe that 90 seconds, it's, um, it's, let's say, a magic number, it does a trick. So then, after you're done with the 90 seconds, what the next step is to return to neutral slowly. And that's the secret of sync under strain. It's the return to neutral in a very slow pace. You don't want this muscle to get activated. So everything is so passive, and that's what causes the change. And you expect 70% improvement after this treatment. So the next one, it's a small um, clip that they have created, and we're going to treat here with the Dr. Jones technique. We're going to treat the upper trap. So um, usually, uh, and I'm going to try to go through the correct timing. Um, you palpate, you find the tender point, you communicate with the patient again to, uh, to make sure that they really feel that tenderness. That's the number five. After you have established that, you take them into that position of this. And with upper traps, the position of this is with side bending to the same side, rotation away, and then you take that arm and you do a nice flexion of 140, 150, 170 degrees. It depends the case. It is not very specific. Some people, they might get release or the five might become zero by just doing the side bending rotation away. Some others, they require that arm to come to 140, again, 160 degrees. And some of them, they, they might even require a traction. They might want to take this arm away from them so they have more relaxation of the trapezius. So the minute you have that, that position of this, you stay there for 90 seconds. And although you don't squeeze that tender point, you still maintain touch because you want to find or observe changes on this tissue. Some people, they feel the release. Some people, they feel heat in that area. However, you will observe changes under your fingers. So you stay there again for 90 seconds. Very important is to have a comfortable position as a therapist. Um, it can be awkward, not for the patient, but for the therapist if you don't, uh, if you don't take care of your, um, of your body while you do, you do this. Um, <clears throat> this extremely relaxing technique um, patients love that. They totally go to a different level of relaxation. So after you finish with the 90 seconds, what you do, slowly, very slowly and passively, you take that arm, um, right now in this case, uh, down to neutral, and again, extremely slow. And that return, it's, 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 it's a phenomenal experience for the patient. And while you when you're done with the arm, then I'm going to take that, um, the head and put it in the neutral and rotate it to neutral. So that's basically uh, what you do for an upper trap um, uh, problem. Um, uh, the next one is going to be scalenus, and again, it's exactly the same principle. Uh, and the principle here is to um, locate uh, the, the tender point. And the scalenus, as you all know, it's behind the stenoclydomastoid and in front of the trapezius. So I will look for the tender point on the scalenus. I will palpate. After I find the tender point, I will ask the patient whether that's five. And I'm going to establish that number. Say, OK, that's five. So while you're holding that point here, and that's five, Okay, you have the agreement with the patient. So then I'm moving to the side and I'm asking them, what is now? Okay, three. Then I move more to flexion. What's two? More flexion. Then I'm going to do some rotation to the same side until I get from them, oh, I feel no pain right now. So the minute I'm in that position and the patient feels no pain, I'm going to remove the pressure, but I'm going to maintain my touch. So again, I'm going to look for changes on the 
locally. So again, I'm there, I'm relaxing, the patient is relaxing, I'm staying for 90 seconds, and then I'm going to move back to um, neutral again very, very slowly. Uh, for some uh, therapists that they have met in the past doing strength under strain, they claim that the secret of this technique is the return. So again, true or not, I don't know, uh, I have observed that, but you have to really try it yourself to uh, see the, uh, the, the difference. Now, the last part that I want to uh, share with you, it is um, the treatment protocol that uh, Dr. Leonard Chato uses the INIT, which is the Integrated Neuromuscular Inhibition Technique. And the fascinating part, and again, it would be nice to get together in a course to go through all of them, but what uh, Dr. Chato does, he pretty much uh, combines a number of techniques in one specific session. So what he does, it is he does a trigger point technique, he does um, strain counter strain or position release, as he call it, and and he does muscle energy technique in, 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 in a sequence that causes um, amazing changes on a muscle uh, uh, spindle level. And I personally use this technique in pretty much all my cases. So to, to go through the steps, and we're going to do that right now, the first thing you do, and I'm going to use the biceps here just for a visual reason, for you to be able to get an understanding of what I'm doing. First thing first, it's palpation, right? And I'm palpating the muscle. And in this case, I'm looking for one of the two trigger points of the biceps. And the specific one, it's in the belly, the mid belly of uh, the biceps brachii. So I have located, located the point, And the next step is what? It's a trigger point therapy. Trigger point, trigger point is ischemic compression. So I'm staying there. Protocol, it's 45 seconds, but again, you might stay for a minute if you have to. And by the way, I don't spend all the time that I have to for demonstration purposes. So after I do my trigger point therapy and I release the point from trigger point point of view, I identify again that point, five, I give the number five, and then I take them to position of ease. That's the position I release now. I position the muscle in a very shortened uh, um, uh, capacity, so and I hold for 90 seconds, so I can cause the changes that I'm looking for uh, through the gamma um, uh, motor neuron in the muscle spindle level. So I recalibrate, in other words, the muscle spindle. So I'm there, again, 90 seconds, I'm holding, um, monitor for uh, changes, and then after the 90 seconds, I do a muscle energy technique. And that's a very mild muscle energy technique. It's just the fibers around that point, the tender or trigger point. That's a different story. I'm not going to get into it right, right now. So I do that. I hold mild contraction. And then I do a local tissue stretch. Now, this is totally, I spread my two fingers, um, my index and my middle finger, over the trigger point. That's all I do. I have the point, the edges of the point in my end, uh, index and middle finger and apply a nice stretch for 30 seconds. Again, it's very mild, nothing extreme here. Then I'm going to go number seven step, which is again muscle energy technique. Now, that muscle energy is slightly more involved because you're going to feel the whole muscle getting contracted. Again, up, up to 10 seconds, that's how much I hold it. And after that, I'm done with that, then I do what? I'm returning back to normal, again, very slowly. That's the part of the strain counter strain. So I'm going back. I'm going back slowly. I give the time the muscle needs that needs to relax in that position. And I'm going to finish that whole protocol, again, giving some time for the, for the muscle to, uh, to adjust. Um, I'm going to go to a nice stretching of the biceps brachii. And pretty much this is uh, the whole protocol uh, that we use. And I personally use more than Dr. John's protocol. I, uh, I personally um, have an affinity over uh, the, uh, Dr. Chado's uh, uh, protocol and idea because, uh, and as you, as many of you do, 
uh, you incorporate so many different techniques at the same time for better results. So I believe that Dr. Chadu's um, protocol, it is much more effective than Dr. Jones. But anyway, you have to try both in order to uh, get the feeling yourselves. But anyone you use, the results are amazing and it's one of the very relaxing techniques that you can use in acute cases or even in chronic cases that they are very oversensitive in terms of their uh, the way they experience their problem. Uh, that 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 was a pretty uh, amazing presentation, and and um, uh, although a few did uh, uh, only twenty million times, I always learn <laughs> something new every time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but um, um, if anyone has any questions, this is the time either to raise your hand, in which case I will unmute your microphone. If there are no questions, I will, um, um, if you can type your question if you like on the uh, typing panel and uh, on the question panel, I'll be able to uh, ask the question uh, from you. I'm going to go back and forth now a little bit between uh, Dr. Zopoulos and myself. Um, but um, um, uh, basically, um, uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Rizopoulos presented, um, uh, you saw that uh, you saw pretty much what the philosophy of hands-on seminars is in uh, our MCMT program, uh, Master Certification in Manual Therapy, that we do not prescribe to only one approach, but it is more of an eclectic, uh, comprehensive approach where we utilize. Um, a variety of teachings, a variety of manual therapy approaches uh, 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 integrated with our own uh, experience in manual therapy and this is what we uh, present. Um, uh, also, for those of you who just came in on uh, um, the call, because I, I did realize that some of you just came in, uh, I would like to let you know uh, that this entire presentation um, uh, is recorded and it will be available to all of you uh, if you would like to watch it from the beginning or again. Um, there are a couple of questions. Uh, let's uh, find out first. Uh, a question from Anne. She's asking, um, are the patients instructed in breathing techniques during the treatment. So, Costa, uh, are the patients instructed in breathing techniques uh, during uh, the treatment? Um, I, I would say yes, uh, and the reason for that is that breathing is a big part of, um, of what we do. Uh, so, you can use breathing in many ways for relaxation or for um, facilitation, but in this way, because you're aiming to relax the muscle, I believe, even if you don't tell them to, to breathe in a relaxed manner, they have no choice because the experience is so relaxing that you see them that most of them, they literally have a feeling of, uh, that they never experienced before. Again, there is something magical about it. There is something so unique about this technique that um, you can really experience it only when you're under this condition and it takes only 90 seconds to, 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 to feel that and most of them when I, I have a talk afterwards and again you have 90 seconds of a treatment and then you can talk forever over their feeling and you see them you see the facial expressions they are totally uh, relaxed and, 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 and I again to answer your question breathing is important you can tell them to uh, to, to incorporate a nice um, uh, relaxing uh, breathing, uh, but even if you don't do, you will see them that uh, it's a reflexive mechanism that they will get into that situation by themselves. Um, thank you, Costas. Another question from uh, uh, Ala uh, is whether there is a um, uh, whether there is a book in strain counter strain uh, that has all of the positions. Uh, for strain, counter strain for every single muscle. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have Gost answer this from his point of view. Uh, from my point of view and from whatever I have read and I know, 
Uh, there are um, some books on strain counter strain that have some samples of muscles, a variety of muscles, but not all of the muscles. Uh, in, in the hands-on seminar courses, uh, we do, for all the muscles that we teach, you get, a, a, you know, your uh, course manual where we describe uh, uh, all of the positions for the muscles that we teach. And hopefully by the end of the year, uh, you're going to see the, um, uh, our book out that will have all of the muscles that we teach in a book format. Costas? Uh, yes, there is, there is a book by um, Dr. Jones. Um, I don't uh, think that um, has all the positions, but it goes through a map with all um, the points. So if you know how to get the point, uh, you can you can do the position of this. And again, it's not very scientific when it comes to realizing what is the position of this of a muscle. If you know biomechanics of a muscle, then the theory is to uh, shorten that muscle. That's all it is. You know, it's just getting to that concept of shortening the muscle by fine-tuning with some rotation, some extra flexion or extension depends the muscle. So yes, there are books. One of them is from Dr. Jones. There is another one on a positional release by Dr. Uh, um, Chato. So you can uh, get it from Amazon as far as I know. But I don't think there is a specific book with all the positions. Uh, but at least you get an understanding of how you can do it yourself. And, and, and of course, I, I should not neglect to say that actually, since you mentioned Dr. Chato, uh, Dr. Chato this year is uh, teaching his positional release course for hands-on seminars exclusively in New York City in April 20th and 21st. And uh, those of you who are uh, interested, um, you can go online at handsonseminars.com and uh, uh, register for Dr. Chato's uh, uh, course uh, or the MCMT program. Um, and uh, let me see if there are no other questions. Costas, is there anything else that you uh, want to add from that you want to add from your side? No, no, that would be all from my side. Thank okay. you. I want to thank you all for uh, being part of this uh, webinar. That's all. Thank you. Okay, Costas, thank you so much also for a marvelous job tonight. And um, our friends and colleagues would like to thank you all for uh, being with us tonight and and uh, uh, spending uh, uh, almost an hour of. Uh, uh, learning, education, um, and um, uh, this way we can uh, all uh, keep spreading the message of good quality manual uh, physical therapy uh, around the world. And uh, um, uh, go to handsonseminars.com, register for the next webinar. We have some exciting webinars coming up. Um, uh, webinars with uh, two webinars with uh, Michael uh, Shacklock on the neurodynamics principle are coming up. Uh, there are a few webinars with Dr. Ines Nakashima on the advanced manipulative therapy and with uh, um, very soon on the website there will be webinars with uh, all of the rest of the faculty of um, uh, hands-on seminars. So once again thank you very much for being so attentive uh, and uh, see you all soon. Have a wonderful night.